Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, the Conservative Political Action Conference, better known as CPAC, is having its annual get-together in Orlando, Florida, this weekend. The event was previously held in Alexandria, Virginia, just across the river from Washington, D.C., but it moved to the Sunshine State during the pandemic on account of Florida's comparatively favorable rules for holding events, obviously, during COVID. So each year, CPAC features speeches from the ideological and political leaders of the Republican Party. Donald Trump will speak, of course, in addition to Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, Christine Noem, Ron DeSantis, and many others. There won't be just Republicans. This year, a prominent Democrat will be speaking as well. Tulsi Gabbard, a former member of the House of Representatives and a 2020 Democratic presidential primary candidate for president. Gabbard is a Democrat and, in fact, an extremely left-leaning one, at least on economic issues. She supported Bernie Sanders in the 2016 primaries, and Sanders came to her defense when Hillary Clinton baselessly and maliciously referred to Gabbard as a Russian asset. But Gabbard has made no secret of the fact that she strongly disapproves of both the Biden administration and the mainstream media's fealty to it. Here she was, for instance, criticizing joint efforts by the White House, the media, and social justice activists to cancel Joe Rogan. Yeah, I mean, I, I've gotten to know Joe. I, I consider him a good friend. Uh, he's he's like the nicest, most generous, humble guy. Um, and I think he's done the right thing in addressing these issues that have come up very directly, very honestly, and and been very ready to admit how can he be better and apologizing. Um, I think it's what we would hope to get from from anyone, really. And I think how not only a lot of the kind of corporate response has been, uh, but also, frankly, the White House inserting itself into trying to cancel Joe Rogan points to the bigger issue, which is uh, really the attempts by, by the power elite trying to silence and cancel people who dare to question the establishment narrative, who dare to uh, maybe hold a different view. Uh, and and that response, trying to cancel people, silence them, and smear their character is the age-old tactic. I've been on the receiving end of it, so I know exactly how that feels. And it, it is so dangerous because it, it undermines free speech in America. So in that clip, Gabbard made many of the same points that Ryan Kim and I have actually also raised on this show. That doesn't suddenly turn her into a Republican any more than defending Rogan has turned my co-hosts into Republicans. There should be room to criticize liberal censorship and the Biden administration's social overreach within the left. It doesn't make you a traitor to the party. Criticism of one's own side can be a healthy sign. Partisan dysfunction has so broken our brains, so forced us to excuse or ignore everything that's wrong with the tribe in which we've casually be become involuntarily associated with, we're conditioned to see introspection as a kind of disease. It's not. It's exactly the opposite. Nevertheless, Twitter was abuzz with sarcasm yesterday. Countless Democrats saying the mask has finally slipped. Tulsi is outing herself as a Republican. Democratic activist Charlotte Clymer said Tulsi was returning to the mothership. Occupy Democrats said that Tulsi was never really a Democrat. Liberal news website The Daily Beast wrote that it, quote, may seem unusual for a Democratic politician to headline such an event, end quote. Well, here's the problem with all of that. There's actually nothing new about any of this, nothing whatsoever. Major party political events have frequently included speeches by political figures from the other party who happen to be critics of the prevailing orthodoxy or the leadership on their own side. Do you remember Zell Miller? Miller was governor of Georgia throughout the 1990s. Then he was a U.S. senator from 2000 to 2005. He was a Democrat who gave the keynote address at the 1992 Democratic National Convention. But 12 years later, Miller, still a Democrat, endorsed George W. Bush for re-election and was a keynote speaker at the Republican National Convention, disagreeing substantially with Democratic nominee John Kerry. Now, we don't have to go all the way back to 2004, of course. The virtual 2020 Democratic National Convention included a speech by former Republican presidential aspirant John Kasich. The I'm proud of my Republican heritage. It's the party of Lincoln who reflected its founding principles of unity and a higher purpose. But what I have witnessed these past four years belies those principles. Many of us can't imagine four more years going down this path. And that's why I'm asking you to join with me in choosing a better way forward. I believe the best of America lies ahead, but only when we rediscovered our shared belief in the United States of America. 
for our children's future, which can be bright, hopeful, and inspired if we choose to make it so. The only major difference between Kasich speaking at the DNC and Tulsi speaking at CPAC is that the inclusion of Kasich infuriated many progressive activists who apparently would like their coalition to be as small as possible, whereas the GOP seems for the most part extremely welcoming to Tulsi. She's feeling more affinity for the Republican Party these days. Can anyone blame her? And this goes to something you said about, you know, Rogan, when he's, he's mostly saying things on economic issues, class issues that align with progressive Democrats. They don't, whatever, nobody says anything. But then when he, he does his, his, his kind of culture stuff, vaccine stuff, other things that happen to align with the, the, where the Republican Party, where Trump is, then he gets attacked mm -hmm. by the Democrats. So then over time, he will, of course, consider himself more of Team Red right. because that's the incentive. And I think something like that is going on here with Tulsi. I mean, like, it's not, she's a, ma she's a huge critic of the Biden administration. So in the rich tradition of members of the other party who happen to dislike the current leadership speaking at your political event, like, that's what she's doing. It's not, not it was so funny to see all those, oh, this has never happened before. It happened, it happened. To, it happens every cycle. It happens every, every yeah. cycle. Except, so, I, w I agree with your general point, but I think Tulsi specifically is a slightly different case, and we should have her on and, and explore some of her views and where they are today, because I'm not so sure that she's economically on the left anymore. So, for instance, like a couple months ago, she was on Tucker's, I think it was Tucker's show, and was asked about Build Back Better, and her entire criticism of Build Back Better was just very standard Ronald Reagan talking points spending too much money, uh, offering handouts to people, going to make them lazy. Like, it was, which, fine, like, if that's your, mm -hmm. that, that is a politics, that is a view on economic policy that millions of people hold, it's not a left-wing view. It's not a progressive view. Uh, it's not actually even very populist. It's just, you know, just standard run-of-the-mill Reaganism. And so she has been moving kind of toward that in all of her politics. So for a while, as she, I, this is my take on her, is that she's been moving from left to right, Democrat to Republican. And throughout that journey, there's some heterodox politics going on because you, it's, you, it's hard to take all of your luggage with you on one trip. And so she's still leaving some back on the Democratic side. But very gradually, she's going back and picking up all of it and bringing it back. And it's a place where she is comfortable. And again, it's not a criticism of her. These are just her politics. You know, early on, earlier on in her life, uh, you know, she had extremely conservative cultural politics. Some of those remained throughout her career, even as a Democrat, specifically around uh, Islam and the, the West's relationship with Islam and her support of the global war on terror uh, and, her, and her allegiance with a lot of kind of Hindu nationalist right wing kind of Islamophobic elements. Like, that was a part of her politics that was always there, uh, along with other conservative cultural elements, which, which she shifted on, LGBT rights, marriage equality, uh, abortion. Um, I, I could imagine her on some of those, rethinking that as she goes through her journey. So she's, she's a very interesting political figure. And it doesn't, she doesn't fit as easily into some of these boxes, although eventually I think she might. But work part her way of back this, into a box. Don't, don't you think part of this, I mean, on, on foreign policy, she's been a, you know, massively against nation building and those kinds of interventions. Yes, but also a radically like aggressive supporter of drone strikes and the global war on terror to the point where she went on a mission just like a year ago. Like she, she's, she practices what she preaches. So, you know, she's, she's, she went to Africa on a, on, on a mission, on a global war on terror mission, just, you know, fairly recently. So she has ne she's never shied away from uh, that, that element of the, the Bush-Obama. The kill terrorist Biden. part of it. Well, right. But her definition of terrorists basically includes, like, everyone in Idlib. Well, right. But she's, she's against what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan, et cetera. She's against elements she's vocally of Vocally opposed right. the, yeah. yeah. And my sense is that now some foreign policy views that would obviously have been progressive views are no longer that because of the kind of liberal embrace of Russia as the major threat and that you have to be 
hawk you have to be hawkish toward Russia, which was not a liberal view. Right. It depends on which as element of, of the five party years ago you're talking about, but yeah. And now is. And so if someone is very much associated with that as one of their main beliefs, they need to get they're they're going to get pushed out of the coalition because the coalition needs to be hawkish toward Russia. Right. The center left coalition. The center left coalition. Certainly yeah. does, yeah. On the yeah. on the left, Bernie Sanders and others like Right. They're, they're, that, that wing is not, doesn't want to see confrontation with Russia, but yes. But she, she's very specific about being opposed to, quote, regime change wars. And, you, and after a while of hearing her constantly say regime change wars, like, why do you keep adding that qualifier to regime change wars? What wars are you good with? It's like, oh, oh you're good with war, imperial wars that are targeting people that you believe are in the category of, of radical extremist uh, Islamists. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> defend her. No. I'm not sure she would say she's for imperial wars. It, oh, let's not call them a global war on terror. I mean, what what is a I what mean, is I support what is the a, effort to kill ISIS? I don't know. Right, but she's fine with a ISIS. global. I'm just saying that the difference between imperialism and a global war right. is what I mean. Like a global war is imperialism, right? It's a, it's a offensive war around the world. We, we call it defensive because we're going to get them before they get us. I mean, I think, but virtually everyone in, like there are maybe are some people who say we shouldn't even like kill ISIS. Oh yeah, yeah, ISIS no, that, 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 that's true, that's, that's true not that a, she's not, that, that, that almost that almost everybody is supportive of the global war on terror. And that's absolutely true. Well, uh, I guess even I am an, by your definition, right. and I would she's not just otherwise a much more say that I am. She's just a much more outspoken. And that's just one element of her. Right. Right. Well, we should, we should have her on and we can, yeah. we can ask about her herself. Stick around, our rising panel will be with us coming up next.